everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here at loverugbyleague.com. I'm James Gordon, I'm joined as always by Drew Derbyshire. Drew, good day. Good day. Um, we're going to talk about <laughs> we're going to talk about the Super League playoffs this week. Looking ahead to the grand final next week, we're going to talk Championship grand final as well. Big game this weekend in Toronto. Um, White cappers against the expansion. Yeah, uh, we'll talk. We'll go through the rugby league news as well. Uh, thanks as always to sponsors Betfred, um, and also thanks to everyone who tunes in every week, and uh, we really do appreciate the messages. Uh, please do leave your comments if you want us to talk about anything in particular, or if you want to throw in your opinion into the debate as well. Um, just as we were coming on, well, I think it was just as we were coming on, former lead hooker James Seguiaro has been um, provisionally suspended by the NRL for failing um, a drugs test, performance enhancing drug as well. I know a few of them are... Uh, we seem to have more uh, cocaine type drugs bans these days than performance enhancing, don't yeah, we? Yeah, well, there's, there's not many performance uh, enhancing drug bans uh, anymore. Um, well, these days, but obviously there was one last week, wasn't there, in, the, in League oh, 1? Yeah, but that, was a, coca- that was a cocaine one as well, I think. The West was, it? Was, yeah. was it? Was it not performance enhancing? Well, I don't know if he had a couple, but anyway, he got four year ban. Anyway, Seguiaro, of course, had that uh, ill-fated spell at Leeds, shall we say, ended up going back home. Um, he has been sort of doing all right in the NRL playing for Brisbane, um, but he's banned now. Um, a few other bits of news before we get into the uh, into the real stuff. Campbell Graham, South Sydney Rabbit Hose winger, he's set to play for Scotland in World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, his father was born in Glasgow. Qualifiers I see his mother was born in Coventry, so he could have played for England. Well, he could play for Great Britain now as well. He could play for Great Britain, he could represent both and play for Great Britain. Six foot six six winger. Let's not not open that can of worms this early. Victor Rabbit could also play for England, Um, his father. Well, of course, speaking of Great Britain, Jackson Hastings has apparently thrown his hat in the ring now, having got the required paperwork. I, I mean... Obviously, he wasn't in the training squad because obviously they didn't think he was eligible. But presumably now they'll chuck well, him in. Well, it's, it's not as always they, they didn't think he was eligible. It was about proving his eligibility. Um, but apparently, all the paperwork's gone through now uh, to the RFL. The RFL have confirmed that they're giving him the green light, so he can represent England uh, and Great Britain uh, moving forward. Uh, it's it's pretty it's a pretty big commitment from Jackson here. Since how old is he? Twenty three. Yeah. Um, so obviously there is a, still a, a chance that he could uh, represent uh, Australia if he does decide to go back to the NRL in one or two years' time. Um, so I like it. I like that he's coming <coughs> to England. Uh, obviously he's, he's enjoyed his time over here so far, hasn't he? And I think a lot of a lot of Super League fans, not just Salford fans, a lot of Super League fans uh, look up to him, uh, and a lot of Super League fans adore him. And I think I think he's. Is enjoying that, and who wouldn't really? The, I mean, there's a bit of a mixed opinion about this situation, isn't there? I mean, similar with Blake Austin, where um, some fans are a little bit, they don't think that Blake Austin and, and Lachlan Clute and players like that should be included in the Great Britain squad. Um, partly, I think, because there's this, obviously, there's this cloud over um, England or Great Britain Rugby League regarding not having beat Australia for so long in a series or winning a World Cup, and I think. I've seen a few comments where it's like, oh well, if 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 Great Britain was to or England was to win the World Cup mm. with a Blake Austin or a Jackson Hastings, then the Aussies would be like, oh well, you know, you've not really beat us because you've got Aussies yeah, in there. I, I understand both sides of the argument to be honest, um, but I'm on the, I, I I don't mind people representing the the family heritage. I don't I don't think the residency rule. Like what was a couple of years back when we seen Mary Fassabelu play for Great Britain and uh, obviously Randy Randy Chase uh, play for England via the residency rule. I thought that was uh, a lot of tosh to be fair. Um, But when it comes down to family heritage, I think people can be proud of the family um, and where they come from and what the heritage is. So I I, I don't mind it in that respect. Let's let's remember as well, um, one of the greatest forwards to to ever play the game in the modern era, Petrol Sivanesiva. Born in Fiji, played for the Kangaroos, um, so I don't think uh, the audience can be talking. I mean, if, if uh, Blake Austin and, and Jackson Hastings represent it, it's uh, very, England and Great Britain, it's very difficult for rugby league with the heritage situation because the reality is, is without heritage players, there'd be like five nations in the world. You'd have England, France, Wales, Australia, New Zealand. You know, maybe Papua New Guinea would be able to put a team together, but you know, you certainly wouldn't be able to hold a. A credible World Cup, and uh, you know, part of me thinks, well, 
I mean, I'm of the opinion that I'd rather it was the other way, where you had genuine international teams. But then at the same time, if eligibility says that if your parents or your grandparents can, you know, um, qualify you, then I don't see a problem. I think, I think uh, part of the issue is they don't is is stopping people from swapping, isn't it? So yeah. it's like once you've decided, right, I'm playing for. I mean, we've seen that with Tonga. Is obviously they've had as much as it's great for Tamalolo and for Fee to play for them. They have previously played for mm. New Zealand and Australia, and I think part of the issue is like, right, okay. If you want to play for country, you name that country you want to play for, and then and then so be it. I mean, there's a little bit of cynicism about over Blake Austin in terms of well, he's only playing for Great Britain because he knows now he's got no chance of playing for Australia. Um, I do think it is, it is a tough one, and uh, you you can kind of understand both sides of the argument. What for take George Williams for example, young English half back, uh, born and raised in England, and obviously. What would his feelings be if he's overlooked by Blake Austin and Jackson Hastings uh, in the halves who are obviously born in Australia? But I must reiterate my point. I'm all for, for the heritage rule uh, that England or Great Britain aren't breaking the laws by, by bringing these players through. Uh, as we've seen with the, the Ireland squad and the Scotland squad, uh, which has been announced in, in recent days, um, that they are full of heritage. Heritage players. Um, I don't see. I don't see much much wrong with it, James. I, I, mean, I, I, I think. I think too many people are getting carried away with it. I honest. mean, my my main bugbear with the heritage players is, and you mentioned Ireland and Scotland there, is you've got France and Wales who are genuinely developing professional, semi-professional players, and France and Wales find themselves struggling at World Cups to compete with the likes of Scotland and Ireland because Scotland and Ireland are, are realistically full of. English players or Australian players that qualify through heritage. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong necessarily what Scotland and Ireland are doing, but it doesn't really promote what Wales and France are trying to do in terms of developing their own players. If other country, you know, what if Wales turned around and said, right, you know what, we're not going to bother producing any more players. We're just going to find any English players who've got Welsh heritage and play them that way. And that's not growing the game, if you know what I mean. That's not getting. And you know, when you look at what Scotland have done. Scotland, you know, they, they, they've been in the quarterfinals of the World Cup, but as, is the game really progressing up there? Just because you've got 17 fellas running around with a, a Scotland shirt on and doing okay in a World Cup? I'm not sure it is. I made this point in the blog about Tonga last week. It, it's like, to expand the game, you need more players playing the game. And Wales and France are two examples of countries that have got more players playing the game than, you know... Scotland and Ireland. Maybe do you need to say that maybe there needs to be a limit, a cap on heritage players? You know, does there need to be that sort of thing in place, or or even the other way round, where you say right, you've got a you've got a name, you know, the developing or the tier two nations have got a name, a certain number of players that have been through their systems. I don't, I don't think there, there needs to be. I don't. I don't know. I think me and you have got very opposing views on international rugby league, James, but. I, I don't think there needs to be. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way that international rugby league is going. Thank God the whole Tonga crisis uh, looks to be over and done with now, and they look to put a strong team out this autumn in the in the nines and in the uh, test matches against uh, Australia and Great Britain. I, th- I think we're in a decent we're in a decent little spot here, and I think we're we're in for a good autumn uh, regarding Great Britain, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the the World Cup nines works. We've not really seen. Over in this country, that um, anything really raised. Yeah, there was that. We've, not, we've not seen much marketing of it. Obviously, well, it's, it's, just, it's just a two-day it's, it's, it's just a two-day thing, isn't it? We've not we've not really seen a great deal. Um, we don't we don't even know if it's been televised, do we yet? In this well, no, and, that, and that's part of the problem that you always have with the international game, isn't it? It's never. It always feels a bit last minute. You're never quite sure. You know when games are or whether they're going to be on TV and there needs to be a bit more clarity on that. Louis Bank says if they want to play for us, uh, I assume Blake Austin and uh, Jackson Hastings, then we should embrace them. Um, Louis said also adds that we can't use the heritage rule one way and not the other. How many Jamaica players were born in Jamaica? Only how far they have got. You got a fair point. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I say, I mean, it's obviously an interesting debate. I just, I just think that, I just think that, are you developing the game? You know, and I made this point in in the blog last week. Um, Peru played Uruguay in Australia, and it was all just Australian players. 
that had some sort of loose Latin American connection. And it's like, that's not growing the game. You know, they're saying that that's Peru's first international game. Well, it's not though, is it? It's just that you might as well have been called, you might as well have been called Peru Raiders and it's just like a domestic team. That's that's what it is, do you know what I mean? And, and I think that sort of thing annoys me a little bit because it's just given a false, it gives a false, sense of achievement or a false sense of prestige that you know and again i made the comp i made the comparison with the rugby union world cup you look at some of the teams in that rugby union world cup like russia and japan who are full are filled with players that are genuine born in russia raised in russia play the rugby in russia who've come through and any result that russia get is a credit to how rugby union is progressing in russia whereas it sort of feels like with Italy, when Italy beat England, it wasn't a great thing that says, oh, is the rugby league doing well in Italy? Because it wasn't. It was just that they'd managed to cobble together a load of Australians that were good enough to beat England on a one-off game. And, uh, well, that's a nice little segue. Dalian medals, uh, James Tedesco, who's played for Italy in the last two World Cups, yeah, is uh, the main player of the year in the NRL. And that's a prime example, so they, because he, so he would never have played for Italy, would he? If... He would never have played for Italy if you were allowed, if you weren't allowed to swap. Don Hunt also says Wales had a great crack at the two thousand uh, World Cup with heritage players like Cunningham, Breers, and Harris to name a few. Heritage players make the international games miles better, so we should embrace it. But well, no, I don't disagree with Bre that. Breers never played for England, did he? No, 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 I don't think so. They, I don't disagree with him making the games better, but what's the point? We're always told that oh, we want to grow the international game and whatever, but is having a load of English and Australian players playing in different for different nations. Is that really going the game? Surely the game needs to be aiming towards getting a Wales or a France. You know, okay, yeah, we we'll always have a few heritage players, but I just think that at the moment the current way the heritage players works is it's damaging to countries like Wales and France when Scotland and Ireland can be a lot stronger by using heritage players. Shout out to Ireland though because they have produced a rugby league prodigy this uh, this year. Um, yeah, Ronan Michael. Ronan Michael is is he joined. The Huddersfield Academy on trial last year uh, has impressed and he's been offered a full-time deal. Yeah, do, yeah. Well, before we talk about the playoffs, let's run through some news. If you saw Paved Talk, every Monday Paved Talk, it's the site. Jared Sammet apparently being offered round by Wigan. Um, uh, on the international game, the women are going to get paid um, this year for their efforts in the internationals. I think, I think that's it's probably the next step that we need, isn't it, for... for Especially for the for the the women in the top tier uh, of the They're game. They're obviously using the money to save for not buying Casper medals for the uh, finishing top of the league. That's obviously what it is. Um, tra- uh, regard, regarding yeah. summer being offered round to clubs, you can, you can probably you, you can see why uh, it's been done. I thought as soon as we can signed Jared Summer, I thought it would have been used as a squad player, and that's what he's been at. Yeah, but he's done he's done year. okay though, hasn't he? He's, he's, he's done, done okay. okay. I think I think he'll get another Super League gig. Um, I mean, obviously with Hastings coming in, um, you know, are you looking at will Harry Smith? Will Harry Smith get well, some well, first well, team? Well, we're going to have got quite a few options on it. Jake Shorrocks is still under contract for next season at Wigan. Uh, Josh Woods uh, is still under contract. You'd certainly rather see season. one of them give a chance than yeah. Sam at some And obviously, Harry, Harry Smith's going to be the next big thing, isn't it? So... Uh, I think maybe a couple more seasons. Maybe loan Smith out to to a club in maybe in the championship for a season. So he's got a. He's a, a witness lad, so maybe witness. He's a witness lad, yeah, yeah. yeah. He could play, he could play um, for his own time club. Um, but yeah, you, 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 can, you can see why Sam has been offered around. I, 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 I don't well, know. I mean, you'd presume he's take. He, you know, obviously he won't be on loads of money, but yeah. I presume he'll be on a decent salary as well. Um, uh, a, f- a few more bits and bobs. Swinton say that all their uh, contracts will be honoured um, for next season, despite being placed in special measures, of course. A bit of uncertainty at Swinton um, following the whole Manchester Lions fallout. Um, there's been a bit of news about Featherston overnight. So I've seen uh, Featherston general manager David Longo says fans were in tears when they realised they wouldn't be able to afford to go to the grand final in Toronto. Um, also, an interesting note on Ryan Carr, I think it was um, it was in the papers this week, linking James Webster with the Featherstone head coach's job. Um, it, it almost sounds like Carr's definitely going to be off, but surely he's going to stay if they get promoted. He's got a two-year deal, so he's on contract for next year. But you, you can't tell me that he's come over here to coach Featherstone, get some promoted to Super League, and then he's going to go. Surely not. Surely not, but I don't think they're going to get promoted. Sorry no, to well, be, we'll talk about Lionsby. We'll um, 
John Bateman was named in the NRL Team of the Year as the uh, Dally M's second rower of you, the year. I know you had a little bit of a dig at this on Twitter, didn't you? At, at what? Of, of, oh, of, yeah. Of the team. team of the Year with nine players in it's absolutely ridiculous. So what, what I is say this every year. year. Is a forward about year. rower? A well, no, they have, they have, they have, they obviously oh, yeah. have eight players and a sub. Well, how would you get interchange Player of the Year? I mean, what is that about? But like, I, I've never known anything like it. Why? How can you have a team of the year with nine players? I don't. I it's don't ridiculous. Know. I think that's, that that might be one thing that Super League's got over the NRL. Could you imagine like? Well, say, could say, you, say, could say you imagine FIFA announcing the the uh, the, te- the the world team of the year and they had one goalie, one fullback, one centre back, one midfielder, and one striker? It just never happened. Well, at least the NRL held an event uh, to announce well, the, the team of the year rather than just putting it on well, social media. Well, I suppose that's their, that's their man of steel, though, isn't it? Well, I, I don't I don't care. They could have announced. They could have announced the dream team at Man of Steel instead of just announcing it on a random Sunday afternoon. You might have seen with it. We, uh, speaking of developing the game, we are we have ramped up our coverage of the French domestic competition, which started last weekend. Um, Elite Two Championship started. Um, there were some um, some belters, the the Pier and Bajo, who both reached the final last year, thirty-seven thirty. That finished in Pier's favour. Um, so the Elite Two Championship is the second division in France. That's started already. The first division starts on the 16th of November and we'll be covering that live from Carcassonne. Um, we are looking forward to that. Hull prop Levy Nzongu recently released, um, only halfway through a two year contract. He signed for Alby, who he may well be playing in that uh, magic weekend that we're going to, so that'll be interesting to see how it goes. But our understanding is that he's already got someone lined up to come back um, at the end of the French season. So. Someone on the right side of the Ben Eyes, yeah. I think it is, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, a bit more witness. Uh, Jay and Ted Chapel have, have signed new deals at witness. Um, Tony Club avoided a ban for his late hit on Lachlan Coote. I saw you got a bit of stick for this story because who got, who got banned? Some, did someone get banned? No, no, no. Someone got, got, oh, Farr's got Farr's, a warning. Farr's got a great hair. Yeah, Farr's got a great hair. Um, club, club, I mean, he was very lucky not to be banned last week, I thought. He, 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 I did, let, let me get it right. I did this story because a lot of people... Well, no, no. I, a lot no, of people... I, I completely uh, support what you did with that story. <laughs> at the St. Helens game last week, a lot of people after the game, in the press box and on social media fan, uh, with the fans, they, they obviously was, they was saying that club should have got a ban or club should get a ban well, for... Well, I mean, he's trying hard. I mean, on, on uh, Lachlan he, Coote. So, so that's why I ran the story explaining why he's, he's not got a ban and why the RFL uh, panel I mean, I mean, said, he, uh, said he didn't have a ban. So. He's trying hard because, I mean, he, he clubbed Jackson Hastings. See what he did And he's, he's clubbed Lachlan Coote. See I mean, what what's he, he going to do this week? Club uh, Jackson Hastings. He could do any, you know... <laughs> <laughs> if if well, I mean, I, I, I don't think I, I don't know whether he's on holiday when the grand final's on, and he's just trying to make sure he doesn't have to play. Or but in club's defence, I don't think last week's hit on Lachlan Coop was a ban. But it I was think, a bit more. I think maybe, a, I think maybe the week of, before the yeah, elbow on Jackson yeah, Hastings, yeah. that, that should have been the one last week was uh, probably more of a tired sort of. Um, Tackle, bit, yeah, yeah. Just... Uh, Lee, Lee, you've had this story. We've had this story a long time ago, but it's been confirmed now. Lee are going to run a hybrid squad of full-time and part-time players. Interestingly, Feverston said they'll do the same if they go up. That, that's if they go up, boy. That, that's we'll that's going to be brutal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be brutal. Um, I feel sorry for the part-time lads who got go over to Catalan and face that forward back and being worked two days later. Uh, um, you've done a good piece yeah. this week on Matty Ashton, who's gone from zero hour contract to a full time deal at Warrington. Of course, Warrington also signed Anthony Gellin and Keenan Brand. We were talking about Warrington last week, weren't we? Because we, we feel that Warrington need to make a couple of signs, don't we? And yeah. And sort of, are they going to start with Gellin and Toby King in the centres? Well, well, first of all, I think, I, I think Brand's a better centre than Anthony Gellin. Well, uh, potentially. I, I, I don't think at this moment in time you could say that. I, well, I, I run with Brown in the centres. Um, yeah, but you, yeah, but you can't tell me Warrington have signed a 19, 20-year-old lad from Witness to then go straight in to play Super League starting centre. No, not Super League Given that they've just, lost, no, Bryce, no, no, they've just no. lost Bryce, they've just lost Bryce and Goodwin. Um, is Gellin a social media signing? Or are they signing I certainly, purely they, for his ability? Well, I mean, they, they're certainly not. I, I don't think there's. I don't think on the pitch he showed anything at Witness that would make you want to sign. Yeah, uh, I I said when it, when he signed for Witness, I told you in the office and you you, you were quite happy about it. And Lucy, uh, the other Witness fan in the office, were, were quite happy. 
uh, about the signing. He's a good player. On his day, he can be fantastic. He can win you a game. It, but then, then also, he has. It does have a tendency yeah, to make off balls five yards. Yeah, away from his, his defense is his defense is suspect. I think I, I wouldn't have a problem if Gellin was your second centre. So if you had like your top, yeah. your, your number one centre, you know, say you had, I don't know, if you had Nakama and Gellin was your other centre, I don't think there'd be an issue with that. But I think it's just because Toby King, you know, he, he's, Gellin's not a senior centre isn't it the senior centre sort of guy, is he? And then you've got Toby King. And I just think, when you look at what some of the other teams have got, you know, is that some is that an area where Warrington's going to be weak yeah. um, next season? I think they're still looking to make signs in the forwards, aren't they, Warrington? So it's yeah. going to be interesting to see if they, if they bring anyone in. Obviously, like Matazzi's uh, left the club because he was only on a one-year deal. So yeah. uh, his contract's expired. Sammy Kabul. Well, so Sammy, Sammy Kabul's coming into the fold. Will they give... Uh, a young lad, a chance, a Rebe Doro. I mean, uh, I mean, they've got obviously Goodwin's gone, hasn't it? Goodwin's gone, Atkins has gone, Kevin Brown's gone, uh, Ben Westwood's gone. Lucy says hi. Um, oh, you're having a nice time in Ireland, growing the rugby league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, but then of course we've got Widder coming over, and how much of salary is he going to take up? Um, well, it's going to be on a sum, isn't he? Is it, is well, that's what I mean. You know, you know, you know, you're looking at what pocket. you're looking at. Goodwin, Atkins, Brown, Westwood are all going. Widdop's probably going to take up maybe half of that. Mm. I mean, obviously you've got the marquee thing. Obviously, with... yeah, the, the marquee spots are, are full, aren't they? With Austin and, and Widdop, so they can't spend over 170 grand, 175 grand, is it? Yeah. Or, or well, unless they downgrade one of them too. But then obviously that means the salary yeah. goes the cap. But, but what what forwards are up for grabs really? Well, I mean, it's more. I, I honestly think Warrington's issue is they need they need a they need a centre. Um, but they, they have just signed two centres, so can you? Well, that, well that's what I mean. I'm well. surprised that that's what they. But I, I can't see them signing another centre. Well, no, I suppose you're right, and I, and I suppose that's what I'm what I'm getting at really is that. Obviously, you've got Matthew Ashton as well. Are they, they going to start with Gellin and? Gellin and um, King as the centres. We're going to have a good reserve team next year. <laughs> um, <laughs> We're going to uh, have a good sp- reserve team. Speaking of clubs sorting out problems, Leeds signed Luke Gale from Castleford this week. £160,000. Three year deal, 31. He's barely played for two years. Um, so it'll be interesting how that goes. Castle, Castleford have done well Castleford inside the well. Leeds will now have Louis, Rob Louis and Luke Gale at half back, which isn't a terrible combination. It's, good, it's a good combination on paper. Um, but then they had a good team on paper last year. It's going to be very interesting. It's, it, it is a risk for me signing Luke Gale because I think he's played. He, he, I think well, he, he obviously didn't play any games at all in 2019. Mm. 2018, I think he played 15 games, a couple of goals. Mm. Uh, them games were, were, were cut short. Mm. This this could be a, this could be a masterstroke of a signing by Leeds or a or a I, terrible I, signing. Obviously, Leeds in a re- Leeds in a really interesting position because obviously we thought they recruited well last year and then they just didn't have the right players in the right places. They'd be like, well, he never really got going. Mm. Myler is like the supporting half back, isn't he? And, and obviously didn't have anyone controlling things. So now they've got Louis and Gale, maybe they think that they can they can do something. Uh, there's talk that Trent Merrin might be going back to the NRL, um, which, I mean, I, I don't think Merrin had a decent season, but I think, I think we've had this discussion before, don't we? We think that if you're signing a marquee player, it's got to be in a key position. It's got to be your hooker or your full-back or your half-back. Putting it on a back rower, with all due respect to Trent Merrin, is probably not the wisest thing to do. No, it's not, and I think Leeds have realised that because if if Merrin does go back to the NRL, they've got a marquee spot there ready um, to to sign somebody, um, which I think I think the Rhinos are pretty keen for for Merrin to go uh, deep down because they'll free up a lot of wages. They need a hooker, do you think? They need, they need a hooker. Merrin, Merrin's been a good signing for Leeds, I think. He's been, he, he was, yeah, if, he, if, he, was, if he'd he was, come over as your fifth, sixth. Yeah. It was, most paid player, he'd be alright. It, right. it was very, very solid in 2019, and I think he, he upped his game as well when he when he became captain uh, following the departure of Cal Watkins. Um, but I think if he does go back, then they can just they can maybe get another workhorse. Do you, uh, do you not think? Do you not think hooker? Do you not think a hooker's a priority? Yeah. Is Brad Dwyer yeah. really? I mean, as much as a decent player, Dwyer. I, is... I like. I always like to see Brad Dwyer go off the bench. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. He's not. He's not. In, he's nowhere near the level of Daryl Clark no. or James Roby. Yeah, but they'd have to get an. 
they, they'd have to get an overseas or go on. Yeah, there's no I can't really think of anyone in Super League who, who they could sign on. I mean, Sean, is Sean Monk going to stay there or is he... Yeah, I think he's keen to, to stay for next year. Well, I mean, maybe they're going to stay with that. Did they, did they have another cent? Did they go shopping for a centre? You know, obviously Watkins went. You know, Johnny's no, no, they've got Harry Newman and Harold. You think, you think that's... Yeah, no, the, the, that's fine. They've got... Yeah, well, obviously, we've been, we're even told that a few NRL players have been off and around, like Josh Duke and, you know, Possibly. players like that. Um, could he go to Toronto if they go? Um, um, Ashton Golden as well is obviously apparently on his way to Huddersfield. Yeah, um, yeah. So that'll, that'll free up some wages because don't forget, he, he'll be on a, a, a pretty penny at least because he didn't, didn't he sign four yeah, he or five years? Yeah, he signed a four year deal, deal. yeah. yeah. He was about, he's about six months before they discovered Jack Walker, wasn't it? And yeah. he was like, well, surely someone at Leeds knew that they had Jack Walker who is, is probably going to be the best fullback in Great Britain for the next and, However, uh, they, they had his number one painted on the well, not painted, but cut, carved and on the pitch, didn't they? They had the the big number one jersey with Golden on uh, for his unveiling of his new deal. Um, yeah, someone's had a shocker at Leeds there, but anyway. <laughs> and obviously, let's not forget Cal McClellan as well. Who, who I, I really there. like McClellan. I think I that. think if Featherstone go well, I mean, it's interesting because I've seen that um, he wants to stay at Leeds and fight for his place, yeah. doesn't he? I wonder whether if Feverston go up, whether McClellan will have, he'll just sign for the season at Feverston. Possibly. Because, yeah, obviously... Well, I, 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 I bet he's, he's, Golden's in a similar position. Yeah, yeah, because I think McClellan does look decent. But we'll use that as an opportunity to cut into the, to the Championship <laughs> Grand Final. Um, Featherston, brilliant performance at Toulouse on Sunday night. means that they're off to Canada um, to face Toronto Wolfpack. Saturday night, 7.30 kick-off. Um, it's on Sky Sports' main event, I think. Oh, nice. um, which is good. It's on Sky Sports Arena as well. If you've not got main event, um, a real sort of a, a real rugby league clash. This the flat cappers against the expansionists. David versus Goliath, full time against part time. I mean, if if you could epitomise rugby league in one game, this is probably it. You've got Featherstone. You could almost fit the whole of Featherstone in Toronto Stadium. Fifteen thousand two hundred forty-four. I think the population of Featherstone. The population of Toronto is two point seven million. Um, Toronto obviously heavy favourites, 10,000 crowd expected, um, Featherston um, reckon they're taking about 400 which is, a, which is an almighty effort to be fair. Um, uh, Do you think they'll take that many? Five, uh, apparently that's what's, that's what's being said, five or six days notice. Um, I put something on Twitter the other day which as usual caused a bit of a stall. I'd be devastated if, if my team was playing and I couldn't afford to go. So I well can, you've got too much money James, so uh, you'll never be in that position. Um, it, I could see what he meant where fans had tears in their eyes because they couldn't afford it. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not, I wasn't making the point that it shouldn't be in Canada. That's a separate debate. But you would be devastated, wouldn't you, if yeah. your team had got to such a big game and, and it was for, and you couldn't afford it. I mean, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be devastated. Uh, we've been over this situation quite a few times about the, yeah, the, uh, the grand final. And, 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 and the Feverson GM says the same. He thinks it should be at a neutral venue. Um, I mean, well, where, where's the neutral venue between Feverston and Toronto? <laughs> well, actually, I've I, I seen this. Toronto's, uh, Toronto's um, nearest rivals in Super League would be St Helens. Really? Yeah, that's the. Uh, yeah, so if, if, if Toronto come up, sorry, St Helens will be there. So you fight to Liverpool. I think, I think if Witness were in Super League, I think Witness are the most Western team. Alright. So yeah. it'd have been Witness if Witness were in it. I think Witness are the most Southern team as well. Other than, <laughs> <laughs> other than that as well, if, if Witness were in it. Oh, right, okay. um, so, um, so, that so could, is, that, is that being the new derby then, the new Good Friday so, derby? Well, Toronto, Toronto St Helens, oh. Uh, well, we'll see, won't we? I very much doubt it, but yeah. Um, obviously, Toronto. I mean, it'd be, and I've I've wrote a, a decent piece on the site, a column this week um, about Featherstone and Toronto. Toronto, it'd be pretty harsh. I mean, no, it'd be very harsh on them for them not to go up this year. They dominated the championship two seasons in a row. Last season, they won five out of seven in the qualifiers and still didn't come up because obviously they lost a million pound game. They've won all but one games this season, um, you know. And but ultimately, the system, whether you agree with it or not, is that they've got to win the grand final to go up. And Featherstone come into it on the back of three incredible away wins, and they go into it with nothing to lose, much like London Broncos did last year. Mm. I know uh, it's, it is. It's madness when you think of it. Like even when you think it's quite remarkable that the Toronto coach is English. And the Featherstone coach is Australia. When you're talking about the expansionists versus flat cappers, it'd be even better if Featherstone's coach was Canadian. It's it's it's, it's, <laughs> going, it's going to be a, a, 
an absolute mountain to climb for for feathers. I, I honestly can't. I don't know how they go. Uh, what what could their game plan be to go to Toronto? But Feathers now actually got a decent record in Toronto. Feathers were the first team to beat Toronto in Toronto. I think this season they pushed them pretty close as well in the league. So Feathers have actually got a decent record comparatively. I just think uh, Toronto are strong, aren't they? All over the park, from from full back to. Well, to I mean, you know, so I mean, the they, obviously. Players. Toronto spend three three players nominated for Championship Player of the Year. Uh, yeah, I'm, year I'm, I'm paid. It's one of those you know, that, that that's without without a doubt. I'm paid. I, I, I just can't. I, can't I, just, I don't know where Featherston are, are going to score enough points to to, to beat Toronto. I think they're just uh, too strong. It'd be it'd be not, Well, I mean, you look. It's really interesting to see what the crows are like as well. I think I think they're they're, they're, they're expecting seven thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I well. think I mean what London did last year was London. Obviously, kept in the they they scrapped didn't they? They kept in the game, mm-hmm. and obviously Toronto couldn't break them down, and that's got to be the way forward. You know, Featherston aren't going to outscore Toronto in a high-scoring game, are they? Mm-hmm. But if they can keep it low-scoring, then you've you've got a chance. Um, so Toronto have said for um, fair play to them, they, they've said they, they've actually sold eight thousand tickets for the game. They've actually sold them, and they're not giveaways or anything like this. What people are saying, they've actually sold eight thousand so far. So. Uh, Hopefully, I'd have three or four hundred from Fairman. I think what you want is you know, Saturday night, play? Saturday night, Sky Sports main event. You want a competitive game. You don't want to run yeah. through winning 50 0. You want it to be a real arm wrestle, a real good quality game. Um, and we'll see. Um, Toronto ha, Toronto actually haven't been. I, I, I was, I've been meaning to ask one of the players this. Toronto have actually not played an away game since August the 4th. So I presume all the players have just been over there for the last yeah. two months. Um, They've only played one game in the last three weeks because they beat Toulouse. Um, they've not really had... Is there a risk that Toronto may have this St. Helens syndrome where, because they had the, you know, because they had, you know, the, the Challenge Cup thing where, because they've won the league so comfortably many weeks ago, they've only really had one run out in the last maybe six, seven weeks that was... Are you claiming that as a John Wilkin curse then? I'm not saying it's a John Wilkin <laughs> curse. No, I'm just no, saying that... I'm just joking. saying that... You know, they've only the only game the only game they've played in the last two months. No, I had anything riding on it. Was that I, I think the the thing that's different with Toronto this year is Brian McDermott. He knows how to get, how to get mm. himself up for a big game, and he knows how to get his players up. For and a big and game. you mentioned John Wilkin. John Wilkin would be pretty critical to we, that as well. Uh, Ricky Latelli, he's played in NRL. And they've got uh, quite. Finals. They've still got quite a few players from last year. He'll probably have that in the back of the mind in terms of well, they don't want that to happen again. I, I think they're going to be more determined than. Than we actually realise. Uh, I think they'll they'll come out and try and blow uh, Featherstone from from minute one. I, yeah, but like I said, I just hope it's a close game. I hope we get a good spectacle on Sky. And yeah. uh, I, I I hope after the game, no matter who wins, I think I I just hope everyone applauds whoever whoever um, gets into into but Super. There's obviously a bit of concern over. I mean, Toronto have now been given the green light to go up. Um, if they do win, which to be fair should never have been a debate anyway. Matty Matty. Um, well, Matthew Morrison has commented saying Luke many grand finals will kid uh bottled with Saints. It's definitely going to happen again, especially with um Featherstone because they're full of Leeds players. Well, I mean they, they, I think they had four, four last year. Yeah, they yeah. had four last week. They had yeah. uh, Golden, Wellington Albert, um McClelland and Alex Sutcliffe with the four mm. last week. Um they obviously Cameron King um, didn't play last week either, so he'll be coming back into the to the fray. You you would imagine Salford Barn Connor Jones had a good game actually last week. Good player, um, good yeah, player. good 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 pick up. Um, uh, is obviously there's a bit of a debate about promotion and whatnot. If Feverston go up, there's seven Yorkshire teams in Super League, which is. I don't know what you're gonna say here, James. What? You're gonna be on about the TV deal, aren't you? Well, I, I did tweet something about this the other day again and. Uh, ruffled a few feathers. I mean, seven out of the twelve Super League teams would be in Yorkshire if Everton go up. Three of which, of course, would be, you know, within spitting. For all. Within, but then, yeah. I mean, you could say that you know Saints, Warrington, and Witness are Possibly. just as close as that. But um, obviously, it is a little bit of a problem. Well, not a problem because, in my opinion, I'm like, if there was twelve Yorkshire teams, it's fine because it's ultimately mm. if the teams have worked their way up to get there. But we talk about expansion, and I've mentioned this before. Surely, the way of expanding is to expand the size of the league. You know, it strikes me that this season would have been the perfect opportunity to go to fourteen, put Toronto and Toulouse in, have London in there, and you'd have expanded the league. You've got rid of the loop fixtures, and I don't know. I just sort of feel sometimes that we're always contradicting what we're trying to do because it's like, well, yeah, you want people to progress on the pitch, and then you want expansion as well. 
Well, expanding surely means adding teams rather than mm. taking it away. Um, I thought, I, we both agree, don't we, that the, the league should be extended, less loop, get rid of loop fixtures. I mean, and the other um, point is, if you extend the league, is I think, you know, you look I, at... I think <coughs> Super League would be quite eager to do that as well. But they extended to 14, didn't they? And, and for whatever reason, contracted back. I, th- I, think, I think that was part, part of the reason with the 14, was that was the licensing era, wasn't it? Mm. And I think now, if you look at the Championship and you look at Super League, why would you not have two up, two down? You know, Toronto this season should have been automatically promoted. I mean, you know, a bit like they're doing League One, automatic promotion for the winner, and then second to fifth in the playoffs. I, I think now that for me, mm. because you're not expanding, and I know people say about the quality, and you know, oh, well, if you have fourteen teams, the quality will diminish. Well, the quality in theory is diminishing anyway, because teams like Toronto and Lee and, and other teams are pulling players out of the top flight to play in the championship by offering them more money. So you know. I'd love to. I'd love to be able to run the game and, and run it in a way that, you know. But the problem you've got the clubs have got all this power, haven't they? Where they don't, you know, the clubs are probably desperate. The Super League clubs are probably desperate for Toronto to win this week because if Everton win, they're all 120 grand worse off, and that's a ridiculous scenario to be in. You shouldn't have a preference over who comes in. It should be whoever deserves. If Toronto win, they deserve to come in. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Louis says, should there be a cap on how many players a team can use in a season? Most teams have a squad of around 26 players and use them covering injuries, uh, etc. Fev have used 46 players this year. Yeah, they've got 25. Fresh, wherever players are fielding, injured players is the dual reg system firm. Well, I mean, the thing is with the dual reg system, whether you agree with it or not, it is open to everybody. So, um, you know, any other team could have done what Featherstone have done. Um, I mean, in many ways, you could point at Leeds and Featherstone. They've Im- the way they've embraced the dual reg concept is probably what the RFL or whoever came up with the dual reg concept. They that's probably what they thought it should be like. Do you know what I mean? I think that's you know it's like you'd imagine if Warrington linked up with Witness and did a similar sort of thing. It, I think that's ultimately what they've got. You know Wigan and Lee. I think that's ultimately yeah. what they wanted dual reg to be. But you know you know and, and other clubs you know are within the right to say, well, no, actually, we didn't want it to be like that. You know, like Barrow this season, I don't think they used any players that weren't their own. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, an interesting one to see how it all pans out. Um, next year, I spoke to Salford coach Ian Watson at Old Trafford a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I just asked him about the situation regarding their reserve team for next year. They're obviously, they're, got, they're going to have to look into the amateur game uh, to, to get a couple of players, obviously. They have got a small squad anyway of the Red Devils. I think they had 25 or 26 players in the first team squad this year. You've got a Category 3 academy, um, so they're going to use players from that. They're going to use players who ever don't play uh, in the first team. Um, but there is a, there's um, also been mentioned still of uh, having a combined grade to Manchester t- uh, reserve team. So whoever doesn't play for Swinton, whoever doesn't play for Rochdale, whoever doesn't play for... Well, sure whoever they could, doesn't play for well that would be under Salford's umbrella, basically. Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think... Um, but that, that is still... But obviously, all this happening at Swinton, Manchester Lions, um, over the last couple of weeks, that's put a little bit of a dint into yeah, the hopes of having a, a greater Manchester team. Because Swinton, uh, they had big numbers last year. They didn't have a small squad. They had, they had quite a few players in reserve because obviously they get dual res players from Wigan. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how, if, if there is a Greater Manchester reserve team in uh, I, I spoke to someone from Witness the other day. Witness are obviously running, and they have to have a reserves, as do Bradford and Newcastle, I think, because they've all got Grade 1 Academies or Category 1 Academies, whatever it is. Um, Doug Dale has been there in England Academy. Yeah, Witness, Witness are on about signing 89 players for the reserves. Um, Would that just be That'll be like amateur league? players. So I think what Witness are looking at is they're looking at players... Am I going to have to get my boots back on? Well, maybe. What, what, Witness, is, what Witness are looking at is, um, you know, players who are playing amateur, you know, like there's always players who think, oh, he, he should get a goal player mm. pro. I think what Witness are going to look at it for is they can sign these amateur players, put them in the reserves to have a close look at them, and then potentially, you know, so you might find it unearthed a few gems because if there's a 25 year old lad who, for whatever reason, is playing for West Bank and he's not got a chance, it's very unlikely that Witness is going to take the gamble on him playing for the first team. But if they can sign him, get him in the reserve, see what he's up like, you know, up close and personal, and then potentially transition him into the first team. So that's, I think, that's what Witness are going to do. Oh, best next get season. Back then, yeah. yeah, so there's, your, there's your chance. Ball playing loose forward, up for grabs. Yeah, there's your chance. Contact me at, uh, at loverubbly.com. <laughs> 
Uh, so let's talk Super League then, we've got 15 minutes um, left of the show. Um, we'll talk about Salford Wigan this week. Wigan, Wigan Salford this week. Um, at the DW Stadium on Friday. Now obviously, obviously one of the flaws I suppose of the um, playoff system is that we had this game two weeks ago. Um, at the exact same stadium. <laughs> at the exact same stadium. And to be fair, it was a, it was a good game. <laughs> you know, it'll do well to be better than that game. Yeah, uh, it, it was a great game a couple of weeks ago. I think we, we, we all came away from the stadium feeling pretty refreshed and pretty excited about the, the weeks ahead. I think it'll be the same score line. Well, I think it'll be the same result. I don't think it'll be the same score line. Um, <laughs> you'd get good money on that, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> to get it to the um, yeah uh, it's, I, I think we're gonna will come out on top, James. I know uh, there's a couple of people and um, in the press box in brackets, Gemma Carter, who's tipping, uh, <laughs> who's tipping Salford to to win. And now, I think I think she put a, a, a bet on for, for Salford to reach the grand final quite a while back. So uh, I think she'll be hoping. It happens in it for, for more ways than one, but but I think uh, I think the Warriors have too much. Well, whenever they come off at the back of every defeat, they always get a rocket up the backside. Now, so I think uh, I think they'll be on form this week. You're not gonna like this opinion, just to forewarn you. I think the best result for Super League would be for Salford to beat with. Yeah, them. I think everyone is. Everyone's pretty. Because I think I mean I think I mean obviously I think. You know, because that, because obviously Saints are going to be such heavy favourites in the final. I don't think it'd be a great little story for Salford to have got to the final, the first final, and if they get beat by Saints, it's still a good story. Whereas if we can get to the final and Saints trolley them like they did last week, it's a bit like. Oh. But what happens if we can get to the final and they beat Saints? Well, and then everyone's going to be like, oh. Then I'll be like, we can. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Sean I, Auckland, I, I, just, I just think it'd be a real, it'd be a nice little boost for for rugby. No, it would it It'd be a nice. Story. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. If we can win, they hundred percent deserve to be in it. No, but, no idea how that strip for ends will be sold ticket wise. Yeah, if so, so yeah. well, you money. might, you might get some United fans who'll come. Well, they, they'd have to do something like they'd, they'd have to say to United season ticket holders or something like you can, you can get sold, tickets for a five. You sold three, three and a half thousand after for this week, I think, Salford. Nice. For Wigan. That, that's good, that considering that I've been to games this season at the AJ Bell, there's been two and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly. Where are they all? I, th- I think I went to. Yeah, think... but it's like they all say it's, it's dead hard to get to the AJ Bell, but three and a half hours and managed to find yeah. a way to Wigan. Yeah. And it's like, well, come on. I think, yeah, I think a few have jumped on the bandwagon, but. Uh, if, they, if, them fans, if they can get them fans to stick and an extra 500 through the gates at the AJ Bell uh, next year, uh, they've done okay. Uh, you say about money as well, obviously it's quite critical because I think if Salford win, it's probably worth about 150000 to them if they win this week. Like they'll double the money. Jackson has his wages. They're not going to be paying they, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna bring They're going to bring in 150 grand well, yeah, already, yeah. but if they reach the final... That, that's, a, that's, that's a top player's wages, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's... that's, uh, that's very very good for the Red Devils so they're, they're not scrounging and they're not they're not trying to um, bust the way for sponsors and some, some cash because we, we all know there's been cash flow problems that we saw so the yeah. last couple of years. They've got this sponsor thing going at the moment where it's a thousand pounds to enter a raffle and they're going to pick out one company wins and then they're the main sponsor or something mm-hmm. so um, yeah. they're, not, they're not shipping in. No I, I had a look at it and there's no benefits like if you put the thousand in all you get is like a shout out on social and a season ticket and it's like well is it worth it? No. Well rub league on the front oh, that'd be that, right would be, that, would, that would be good yeah you're right. Um, and their colours would go well with the sort of Yeah team. they would they would you're right you're right. Um, so are you going to do it? I don't think so. Oh. Unless unless we can fix it, but I don't think that that will work. Um, so that so Wigan Salford is Friday night. Saturday is the Championship Player Final Toronto Feverson we talked about seven thirty. It's also National Conference League Finals Day or Finals Weekend. The National Conference League Premier Division Championship Player Final is Thatterweath Crusaders against West Hull. I think these are all at Warrington. They're all at Urban Yeah, they're all yeah. That's worked out well, hasn't it, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> it's, at, um, it's at Victoria Park in Warrington. I think there's six games over the two days. Um, also on Saturday, the Division 1 player final is Featherstone Lions against Stanningley. Um, and then Sunday is the NRL Grand Final. Sydney Roosters, Canberra, you're getting up early. Well, it's 9.30, you should be up for Yeah, that. I'll be getting up. Um, I, I hope Canberra Raiders for do it, obviously, because of the, the British lads. Um, who are doing it? Hopefully, our Brits down under piece can can have a little more views on that on the Monday as well after after it. Um, 
if, if Canberra win. They said they won it last year. They won it yeah, the Roosters won it they last won it, year. They won it two years in a row. And then they beat Wigan in the World Cup Challenge. Have they won it two years in a row? Uh, no. Not no. many teams do it two years in a row, do they? Two years in a row, they've they done it this time, obviously. Mm. Um, James Tedesco is an f- unbelievable player. A uh, phenomenal player. Um, but I hope for, for John Bateman, for Josh Hodgson. Josh Hodgson, though, how good, how good is he in the NRL? He's a, he's Elliot, Elliot Whitehead as well. He, Elliot Whitehead. He made his 100th yeah. appearance last week. Ryan Sutton, oh, he might not be in the squad, but Ryan Sutton's obviously at Canberra as well. Oh, it'd be, it'd be uh, amazing. I mean, I mean ba- Bateman would have, of course, won grand final, successive grand finals, wouldn't he? I don't, I can't imagine many players have done that. One super grand final one year True. and then another grand final the next. Did, did Adrian Marley do it? I'm not too sure. I couldn't tell you. Um, uh, Louis says, it will be interesting to see Wigan's young pack bounce back on Friday against Solver because last week they uh, looked shattered and were overrun easily, which I haven't seen from them this season. The, to be fair, there was a bit of debate last week where they should... This should maybe. Um, Do you see that Tony Club only made two carries last week? Well, he's too busy trying to get banned. <laughs> that's 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 madness, isn't it? I'm, I'm sure uh, Luke Thompson made about twenty one. Um, he had some unbelievable stats in there, Luke Thompson from last week. Jeez, he was. Say, he was I mean, one, I mean, that was a great performance from Saint Helens. It has to be said. He was unbel- Luke Thompson were unbelievable last week. Like one of the best performances from prop forward. I've, but there, I've there, seen. Was, there was a bit of one, talk tra- one try, twenty-one tackles, twenty-three carries, one hundred and eighty meters. He made. Uh, there, there was the argument last week with, with Wigan was should they have just thrown the towel in halfway through and, and, and took old Lachlan off and rested a few of them. Yeah, I, I was quite surprised they brought Lachlan back on really because the game was already done. Um, so I'm surprised they brought him back on. Obviously, when it's a derby game, you you want to play for a bit of pride. Um, but yeah, the the thing is about Wigan is whenever they they lose heavily, they always bounce back. Um, so that's why I think they'll beat Salford. They all they always um, come back stronger than than what they went into that Saints game as. Uh, it's also the League One playoff final on Sunday. Oldham uh, take on Newcastle. Um, Newcastle beat Doncaster last week, having lost to them a couple of weeks previous and all the shenanigans of the playoff format there. Um, Newcastle will be the hipster's preference, I suppose, for promotion. Um, amidst, there's been talk that Magic Weekend's going back to that's Newcastle. It. That's kind of an expansion of first Heartland's class. Yeah. Um, there's been talk of Magic going back to Newcastle, so um, for next season. So if Newcastle in Championship, you know, if you if you put a Friday night. I don't know, Newcastle Bradford on the Friday night, or Newcastle Witness, or something you could really boost the numbers for Magic Weekend. Or you could scrap Magic Weekend. Well, yeah, there is that as well. Um, Oldham have been a bit of a yo-yo team over the past decade or so. Um, they would have to probably... They, I think if Oldham get promoted, they have to play at Bower Fold, which is home of Sailing Bridge, because their White Bank Stadium home isn't good enough. So they're almost like, they have to move home every year. Mm-hmm. Whenever they get promoted, they have to move... Um, Oldham finished second behind Whitehead, who of course already got promoted. Um, tough one to call that one, to be fair. Um, I, think, I think Newcastle have just got that bit of star quality that would see them through, but Oldham are a solid team, aren't they? And they're, mm. obviously they've got home advantage. Scott Naylor's last game in charge as well. It is, it is. League. They'll want to see him out on a, on a good note. I just think I think the time's right, isn't it, for Newcastle? They've been in League One for a couple of years now. Um, yeah, I think the, time, the time's right for them to, to come up. Uh, Women's Super League playoff semi finals, are these just straight knockouts? I don't know, Casford Wigan, Saints Leeds, is it just top four and straight knockout to the final? I think so. Oh, it must be because the final's next week, isn't it? So, <laughs> you'd hope so, <laughs> you'd hope so. Is the final at St. Helens? Yeah. Uh, is it? Yeah, sure, I think it is Friday sure, night, is. yeah, totally wicked state. It's on Sky as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Friday it's, night. it's the first one to, to be shown on Sky. Friday the 11th. And it's at St. Helens, so it's going to be St. Helens, Cass, probably at St. I mean, that's just... Oh, let's not, let's not open that can of Central room. ground. Castleford will be even... Castleford will be spitting chips if they lose that match. They didn't have any medals for getting league leaders. And then they have to play... So the, they'll have run-up run medals. They have, they, have, they, have, they, have to play, they have to play the grand final at the team at the, at the, at the other team's ground. I mean, who thinks this up? Who thinks it up, Drew? I love rugby league. Who thinks I, it honestly, I mean, it just, I'm just like, I, surely this is a simple <laughs> thing to sort out. Surely love, this is a simple thing to sort out. I love rugby league at times. I Honestly, there's no sport that 
provides as much shambles as much shambles like, as like, like, all no, competition. Seriously, seriously, they could have There's said, right, Championship Grand Final is going to be at the Alliwell Jones, like it always was, or, it, you know, I was looking, there's been 18 Championship Grand Finals and never has it not been at a neutral venue. Never. It's always been, it's at Heavenly, it's at Hallowell Jones, it's at, but for some reason this season they decide, oh actually, the team that finishes first, it's going to be at their ground. It's rubbish. <coughs> Why couldn't they just come out and say, right, we're going to have Women's Super League Final, Women's Super League Grand Final and the Championship Grand Final as a double header at Warrington or at Bolton or at wherever you want it. Why, why can't the, the Women's Grand Final be as a curtain raiser to the men's at Old Trafford? Well, uh, well, I mean, yeah, that's a fair... I, I think, but they're, they're all the finals, aren't they? It's like the 895 Cup. They want, they want to have all them big, massive balloons and big flags and stuff, don't they? And you can't do that if you've got another game on. I know, but I, I just think... Got, they have got a PDRL game on, haven't they, though? They have, they have, but... I'm not sure how that's it's, it. it's going back to the old Wembley situation, why... How the 1895 Cup was a play before the Ch Challenge Cup final is beyond me. And why not just have the Women's Super League Grand Final before the Men's uh, Super League Grand Final? It, it, I, I just think it, seem, it seems simple to me from the outside. And I know there'll be costs and I know you'd have to pay Manchester United more. Is it, is, it, is, it, um, is it like a logistical issue at Old Trafford? Like, do they have spare changing rooms? That's, the, that's one, one area maybe that... Because I don't do that. I, I the the thing with like, I don't know, but I'm sure I'm sure the I'm sure the the women players involved would rather get changed in just like a classroom at Old Trafford and get to play on the the Old Trafford turf than mm. uh, play at St Helens where they normally would in a normal league fixture anyway. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, obviously you they might have to make a sacrifice. But to be honest, I'd quite like that to happen. To, and have the women have Trafford. the women's game at half five and have the men's at eight because I always I, I'd like the, the men's round final to be later. Why? Exactly. It's just a cost of the football. Yeah, that's what. Selfish. Selfish act. So, am I going on my own this year? <laughs> Very much so, because I think it is. So, yeah, so obviously a big weekend here, all round um, Super League Friday night championship, Saturday night, and then NRL and League One and women's on Sunday. Um, please keep an eye out on loverubbleague.com for all the latest news, views. Features, Drew's views, Drew's dabble, everything. Um, keep tweeting us, keep Facebooking us. Um, don't forget, if you've got something to get off your chest, you can email me, james at loverubbleague.com, um, for our mailbox feature. We've got some crackers in the next couple of weeks from fans that have submitted. Um, thanks, as always, to our sponsors, Betfred. Thanks to Drew. Thanks to you. Thanks and we'll to see James. you. Yeah, we'll see you next week for another Rugby League lunch hour.